Is it just me, or is getting groceries a lot more stressful than it used to be? Whether you're shopping for yourself, a loved one, or using some kind of delivery service, there's this lingering fear that coronavirus might be hitching a ride on the things you buy. Since I'm not in any of the high-risk groups for the virus, I'm more concerned with unknowingly spreading it myself than I am with contracting it. However, I've also been doing some grocery shopping for my 92-year-old grandpa, and I really don't wanna take any chances with him. So today I'm gonna to take a look at what the official guidelines are on this stuff, get some advice from experts, and ultimately let you know what you should be doing, what you shouldn't be doing, and what you could be doing. Let's get into it. To figure out the best ways to protect ourselves and each other from coronavirus, it's important to understand how the virus spreads in the first place. We know that the most predominant way that this virus spreads is by large and medium-sized droplets that someone who is infected is expelling from their mouth when they speak, cough, or sneeze. And those usually go out about six feet and drop to the ground. Probably the second most important way it can spread is by inanimate objects. The FDA and the CDC make the statement that there's no evidence that this is a foodborne disease. But it's very difficult to prove a negative. When I hear there's no evidence that it is, is very different than saying it can't do that. A study published in the New England Journal of Medicine showed that the coronavirus can survive on different surfaces for different lengths of time. On cardboard, it can survive up to 24 hours. On plastic and metal, it can survive up to 72 hours. So if you've got non-perishable delivery or food items and you're wondering if they're safe to handle, consider letting them sit for a few days. If it's cardboard or paper packaging, it should be coronavirus free after just one day. And if it's plastic or metal, it should be coronavirus free after about three days but the temperature it's stored at can make a difference. These type of viruses survive longer under colder temperatures as opposed to ambient temperatures. However, I mean, this doesn't mean that uh, we should not be using our refrigerator or freezer. Refrigeration is very important to prevent the risk of bacteria forming on food. Also, this uh, coronavirus is not expected to survive in stomach acid. If you need to handle items that you think the virus could be living on and aren't able to wait, you could always wash your hands after handling them. Even if coronavirus is on these items, that virus still needs a ride to your face in order to infect you. So if you sanitize your hands with 20 seconds of thorough hand washing after touching these items and before eating or touching your face, you should be protected. It's also good practice to clean any high touch surfaces nearby, like the doorknob, refrigerator handle, or cabinets you may have touched while putting groceries away. When shopping for myself, I'll probably focus on hand washing well and hand washing often. But when I'm shopping for my 92 year old grandfather, I want to make extra certain I'm not bringing the virus into his home. So for folks out there looking to go the extra mile, there are some more options available to you. If you've thought about disinfecting your groceries before, you've probably seen this video from Dr. Jeff Van Wingen which has amassed millions of views. He outlines a lot of different ways to sanitize groceries, including letting non-perishables sit for a few days, removing unnecessary external packaging that could be contaminated like cereal boxes, and cleaning non-porous surfaces like plastic or metal. If you're wondering if that cleaner you use is capable of killing the coronavirus, the EPA has put out a complete list of cleaners that's like 25 pages long, so I'll put the link for that down in the description. And a word of warning to those seeking to disinfect, do not mix cleaners. The wrong combination can create literal poison gas. Always clean in a well-ventilated area and read all warning labels before cleaning. But what about food items without easy to clean packaging, like produce? Dr. Jeff Van Wingen let me know that since his video was published, he'd received word that washing produce with soap is not recommended and that a rinse with cold water is still the best way to go. The current advice is precisely not to use soap or other detergents or sanitizers to wash produce because these products can be absorbed into produce and cause health problems, uh, vomiting, diarrhea, uh, nausea. The guidance from USDA is to rinse produce using cold running water only. And if there is a firm surface, you can scrub it. Uh, also under cold or running water, and there is no, no soap involved. Another thing to keep in mind is that normal cooking temperatures should kill the coronavirus. The USDA generally recommends heating to an internal temperature of 165 degrees as a baseline for food safety, but it varies depending on what you're cooking. So now that you know how to handle your groceries when they're in your home, what's the safest way to actually get them there? For people in high-risk groups like the elderly and immunocompromised, 
delivery is best, since it minimizes the number of people and surfaces you're interacting with. If you can have the delivery person drop the goods off on your doorstep and tip them digitally or through an app, that's even better. And please do tip your delivery people if you can. Remember, they're putting themselves at risk to get this stuff delivered to you. That being said, not everyone can afford or arrange delivery for themselves. If you have to go out for supplies, there are many other precautions you can take to prevent the spread of this virus. An important thing to keep in mind when you go out is that you can carry and spread coronavirus without symptoms. The director of the CDC has said that an estimated 25% of coronavirus carriers in the US don't show symptoms. So even if you feel 100%, you should treat your own germs with the same seriousness as you would treat somebody else's. So what does that look like when you're shopping? You want to minimize your time in the store and minimize how often you go shopping. Try to shop every week or two weeks instead of every few days. Wipe down your cart if your local stores aren't already wiping carts for you. Plan ahead and only touch items you intend to buy so that you aren't leaving your germs laying around to possibly spread to the next person. Your cell phone is a great place for germs to get from your face, to your hands, to the outside world, and back again. So if you have your shopping list on your cell phone, you may want to consider switching to a paper list that you can throw out when you're done. Self-checkout is preferable to having a store employee scan and bag your groceries because it's one less person touching your stuff. And if you use a contactless payment method like Apple Pay, Samsung Pay, or Google Pay, that means you don't have to touch that pin pad everybody else has been touching. If you're wondering about reusable versus disposable bags, the grocery store employees in my neighborhood aren't touching anybody's reusable bags because they could be carrying their germs from home. Now that's not a problem for me since I wanna pack my own bags anyway, but if you want your bags packed by a professional, it's something to keep in mind. In these times, it's good practice to sanitize your reusable bags, either by letting them sit for a few days before your next trip to the store, or by spraying or wiping them down with disinfectant. Cloth bags can also be sanitized in the washing machine with laundry detergent. What about those mask and gloves people have been wearing? Does that really offer any protection? Gloves aren't gonna help very much because they're gonna get contaminated right away. You pick up one package and then another package and another package, you might as well just have your hands on. I think gloves, generally speaking, give a false sense of security and they really aren't offering much protection, if any. The mask is a more debatable area. Where there's no debate is if someone's got COVID, having a mask on is gonna decrease the opportunity for that person to spread it to someone who doesn't. But if we're talking about people who are well, wearing a mask when you go out may offer a little bit of protection, and I'm gonna underline may. It's one of these areas where we don't have a lot of good data, and so you see lots of different people doing lots of different things. And not just people doing different things, but different countries doing different things. And another problem with the mask is that you're constantly fiddling with it. When people got a mask on, they're constantly fiddling with it. Now you've got it on your hands, or may. So you gotta be using alcohol or washing your hands all the time. But I think the biggest problem with masks, frankly, is that there are people who really need these masks, and they're called healthcare workers. And there's a dearth of masks. So for people to be using a mask when they're out means that that's one less mask that our healthcare workers have. And I think we have to consider that. A bandana or other cloth covering can also help prevent those droplets from flying out of your mouth and onto other people. Lastly, I wanna talk about takeout food. As always, it's important to maintain a safe social distance of six feet or more when picking up or getting delivery. And if possible, pay and tip via an app or over the phone instead of in person. Also keep in mind that restaurants have to follow certain food safety guidelines in preparing your food. So you don't have to worry about the food itself as much as the packaging. The takeout ordering and, and cons the consumption of takeout is safe. You can wash your hands right after you uh, bring the food to your house, take the food uh, out of the containers, and, and then you dispose of those containers. Wash your hands basically before uh, you prepare food, before you consume the food as well. Here's the bottom line. Even if coronavirus does hitch a ride on your groceries or your deliveries, that virus can infect you unless it somehow gets a ride to your face. Whatever precautions you decide to take with your groceries, please understand that the most important thing that we can do to prevent the spread of this virus is to maintain a safe social distance of six feet or more, stop touching your face, especially when you're out and about, and wash your hands thoroughly and often. Let us know what steps you're taking to protect yourself and your community from coronavirus down in the comments. As always, thanks so much for watching. Now, if you'll excuse me, I gotta go drop off some groceries.
Thanks, Jesse. Stay safe, everybody. I love that. Jesse.